Hi, my name is Dan and I'm a mental health pharmacist and today I wanted to do a video about vitamin D for the treatment of depression. Where I'm located it is currently winter and people get less sunlight during this time so I thought that it was a good time to make a video about vitamin D. Additionally this video will talk about some of the differences between vitamin D2 versus vitamin D3. First I wanted to start with some background. Vitamin D is an essential, or some sources consider it a non-essential, fat-soluble vitamin. First, it's important to know the differences between an essential and a non-essential vitamin, and then a fat-soluble versus a water-soluble vitamin. An essential vitamin must be obtained from the diet, whereas a non-essential vitamin can be synthesized in the body. Some sources consider vitamin D a non-essential vitamin because your body can synthesize it when exposed to sunlight, while other sources consider vitamin D an essential vitamin because many people still need to obtain vitamin D through supplementation. For example, people who live in climates that don't get much sunlight may need to, ex may need to receive their vitamin D through supplementation. Additionally, melanin absorbs the ultraviolet radiation that's needed to initiate vitamin D synthesis. So people with dark, darker skin tones may not produce as much vitamin D from sunlight, from sunlight or sun exposure, and may also need to obtain vitamin D through supplementation. Vitamin D is fat soluble, which means that it's dissolvable in fat and is stored in the liver and fatty tissues for future use. This differs compared to water-soluble vitamins, which are dissolvable in water, and they're either used immediately or excreted in the urine. If too much of a water-soluble vitamin is taken, it's generally not that big of a deal because you excrete the excess. Whereas fat-soluble vitamins, too much can be taken of them because they're stored in the body for future use. Um, so too much of a fat-soluble vitamin can cause dangerous effects. Examples of fat-soluble vitamins include vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K. Finally, there are a few types of vitamin D, such as ergocalciferol, vitamin D2, which is historically obtained from plant sources, and cholecalciferol, vitamin D3, which is traditionally obtained from fish and lanolin, a product from sheep's wool, but now can be obtained from plant or fungi-based sources as well. Both types are metabolized to calcitriol, which is the active form. Foods that contain vitamin D include oily fish, red meat, liver, eggs, and fortified foods. Many people get their vitamin D through supplementation. How does vitamin D help with depression? Depression is associated with inflammation in the brain, and low vitamin D levels are associated with higher levels of inflammatory markers. Therefore, vitamin D may be beneficial in depression by decreasing neuroinflammation. Additionally, I found a study in children with ADHD who were given vitamin D3 supplementation, and this study showed that this increased dopamine levels. Um, dopamine, increasing dopamine can be helpful in depression as well. The exact mechanism of how vitamin D helps with depression is not known, but these are some of the theories and some of the evidence that exists. Now I wanted to go into the dosing of vitamin D. In the United States, vitamin D is listed in micrograms, MCG, while in other countries, the dosing may be listed in international units, IU. To convert from IU to micrograms, you simply divide the IU by 40, or if you're converting the other way, you multiply it by 40. So for example, the recommended daily allowances depend on age. So for someone age 1 through 70, the recommended amount of vitamin D is 600 international units, or 15 micrograms. And if someone is age 71 or older, the recommended daily allowance is 800 international units, or 20 micrograms. The current recommended daily dietary allowances assume that vitamin D2 and vitamin D3 are equally absorbed, and this is not believed to be the case. Multiple studies show that cholecalciferol, vitamin D3, is absorbed three times as readily as ergocalciferol, vitamin D2. One of the issues with this is that ergocalciferol is obtained from typically plant sources, 
where historically colacalciferol has been obtained from animal sources, such as oily fish or such as lanolin, which is um, made from wool, of woolly animals. Currently, there are some options for vitamin D3 that are plant and fungi based. So this product here um, is one that I purchased and it's vitamin D3 from lichen, which a uh, quick Google search says is a symbi symbiotic relationship between fungi and algae. So typically not all plant-based, or technically not all plant-based because fungi are not plants, but I believe that this product would be both vegetarian and vegan friendly, but if someone can educate me more about lichen and if they're appropriate for vegans and vegetarians, that would be appreciated. Finally, in regards to dosing, taking vitamin D with a high fat meal can, incre can increase absorption by 20% because like I said before, vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin and easily dissolved in fats. Now I wanted to talk about some of the evidence in using vitamin D for the treatment of depression. The first question I wanted to answer is, can vitamin D deficiency cause depression? I found a meta-analysis of over 32,000 patients that showed that the group with the lowest vitamin D level were more than twice as likely to develop depression as compared to the group with the highest vitamin D level. So this shows that vitamin D deficiency may indeed be linked with depression. Next, does vitamin D treat depression? I found a meta-analysis of 948 patients that was a combination of four different trials and this showed that vitamin D had a moderate effect size in the treatment of depression. The studies varied in length from on the shorter end at eight weeks to the longer end at 52 weeks. Three of the trials were of oral vitamin D with doses between 1,500 international units and 50,000 international units weekly rather than daily. And one trial included intramuscular vitamin D. All of note, all of the trials used vitamin D3, the colocalciferol that's more readily absorbed as compared to the ergocalciferol. But again, this, the conclusion of this study showed a moderate effect size in the treatment of depression. The next meta-analysis that I wanted to look at found efficacy in studies that measured vitamin D before and after supplementation to actually show that we were increasing the serum levels of vitamin D. The study concluded that vitamin D supplementation, greater than or equal to 800 international units daily, had an effect size that was comparable to that of prescription antidepressant medications. The final question that I wanted to answer is, does vitamin D prevent depression? So a trial looked at this, and it followed over 18,000 adults over a five-year period. People in the treatment group took vitamin D3, 2,000 international units per day, and fish oil, and the other group took a placebo. Treatment with vitamin D3 and fish oil did not show a statistically significant difference in the prevention of depression, and the authors concluded that they do not support vitamin D3 in, in adults to prevent depression. Finally, I wanted to go over some safety concerns with vitamin D. Natural Medicines database deems vitamin D to be likely safe when used orally or intramuscularly at appropriate doses. Oral long-term doses should not exceed 4,000 international units, which is 100 micrograms per day for adults, but much higher doses can be used for short periods of time to treat vitamin D deficiency. As for side effects, generally vitamin D is well tolerated. Side effects are rare but possible, especially when too much is taken because remember vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin. Vitamin D intoxication can cause hypertension, which means high blood pressure, dry mouth, decreased libido, osteoporosis, eye problems like uh, calcific conjunctivitis and photophobia, psychosis, and hypercalcemia. Finally, vitamin D does have some drug interactions, so it's important to check into this before you start vitamin D supplementation. Vitamin D interacts with thing, things such as atorvastatin, brand name Lipitor for cholesterol, high cholesterol. Vitamin D may re reduce the absorption of atorvastatin. Uh, vitamin D may also induce a type of enzyme in your liver called CYP3A4 enzymes, so that can have drug interaction effects as well. Vitamin D affects uh, digoxin potentially, 
vitamin D affects calcium because vitamin D increases the absorption of calcium. So taking ca too much calcium and too much vitamin D can lead to high amounts of calcium in the body. Finally, certain drugs may reduce blood levels of vitamin D, so may require someone to take more vitamin D or take vitamin D supplementation. Example drugs include carbamazepine, corticosteroids, phenobarbital, phenytoin, and more drugs than that. So in conclusion, there are some studies that support vitamin D for the treatment of depression. Of note, almost all the studies that I found were using vitamin D3, which is colocalciferol and more readily absorbed than ergocalciferol. I hope this video was helpful and thank you for watching.